Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you two uh, different topics and they are not necessarily related, but um, I would like to cover both of them in this video. The first one is in painting, which is basically uh, if your image has some pixels missing or corrupted, let's say you have an old image, right, an analog image, that there is uh, some part of it that is uh, scratched or something, and now you scan it and you want to fix it. So there are some pixels that are corrupted or missing. So one of the methods for fixing that is in painting, which is basically um, the methods are mostly about uh, filling those missing or corrupted pixels with uh, the average weighted or the weighted values, average weighted values of this neighboring pixels. So you give some weights to the pixels surrounding the missing pixels and weight those um, values, add them together, take some average and assign it to this pixel. And to know which pixels are missing, you need a mask. You need a black and white mask where white means uh, the pixels that need to be fixed or in painted and black is the good pixels. So here I have the image Lena and I artificially added a scratch of white pixels using the eraser in Microsoft Paint on it and then I have created the mask for it. I'm gonna uh, bring them inside the OpenCV and then I use the CV2 in paint, which has two different methods for fixing that uh, in painting problem. So you pass to it the image, you pass to it the mask, you pass to it the number of um, in paint radius pixels, right? So if you say three it means surrounding each um, pixel in the mask, the three pixels, that pixel and the three neighboring pixels are going to be, uh, the three neighboring pixels are going to be used and there will be weight on their values and then the average uh, weighted value is going to be assigned. So you're going to use the three pixels surrounding the pixel instead of just one. You say one means just the pixel next to it, three means three layers. And typically, they don't all get the same weight. The closer the pixel is to your desired pixel, they're going to get a bigger weight. And as you get further away from those masked pixels, your weight would drop. So there are two methods for that. One is called the fast marching method. And you can use it with CV2 in paint underscore tele, I guess. T-E-L-E-E. -E -E, L E A. The other one is kind of a fluid mechanics. It's an interesting one based on the Navier-Stokes equations. It's called CV2 in paint NS, which is for Navier-Stokes. So you can use either one and provide the number of pixels surrounding them to be used. And it is going to give you the uh, in-painted image. So here I'm going to show you all of them, which is uh, going to be quite a bit interesting. So here you can see them. This is image Lena that I manually kind of um, added something. So let's say all of these pixels are missing. This is the mask for that region that is missing. And here is the in-painted uh, image, which as you can see actually is very good. Now, of course, you can see this kind of shadow area here, right? So it's not gonna be perfect. You still might see some shadow. It's not gonna be perfect, but Compared to this one, look at this one. This is much, much better than that, right? So this is uh, with um, three pixels, and you, know, you can feel free to change the parameters. So if I, I use more pixels, right? Take a look here. If I use five pixels in the neighborhood, right? You see here that uh, it's a little bit uh, less obvious shadow. If I just use one layer, right? then um, the effect is interesting. Look here. To me, the shadow is here a little bit uh, more obvious. So I would rather use uh, not a very small number, but a little bit um, bigger number, three, four, five or something. Now you don't want to go too large because then the pixels that have nothing to do with your mask pixels will affect it even though very small, but they still will affect it. So you don't want to really go big number. Probably five is your max, but 
three to five is more reasonable and the performance of these two methods are not much different. I mean, uh, remember this five with this one and then if I do a five with the Navier Stokes method, the performance is not significantly better than this. So here you see I have this shadow area, right? And then if I use this other method instead, right? The performance is not much improved. So um, you can use either one. So as you can see here, you still see that guy. To me, it's even a little bit probably worse than that. So it's up to you which method to use. But uh, again, the quality of this image is much, much better than the one with a lot of pixels missing. So this is in painting, which is an interesting topic. And before I go to the next topic, I wanted to just mention one thing that is quite a bit interesting. So if you show with the uh, matplot, matplotlib pyplot library, if you show an image, right, using plt.imshow, if you use an image, a basic image, and just go ahead and show it, you're going to see that the colors of that image are not going to be what you expect, right? I mean, remember here we had the Lina image with the colors all being nice and correct. Now, if instead of me using this expression here, right, if I go ahead and use just the image itself without using this color space conversion, if I do that, look at what happens to the image Lina. So here is what you have, and it's like the colors are kind of reverse, right? It's kind of like the uh, ones in the movie Avatar or something. The colors are completely different. It's like backwards. And you are right. The colors are backward because, as you know, OpenCV, the colors are BGR instead of RGB. Okay? So, uh, although uh, when I pass the I am show command, you expect it to show you regular RGB channels, but it gives you BGR channels. So, it kind of switches the channel red for uh, blue and blue for red it doesn't change the green color and that's what happens so what you need to do instead is go ahead and um, use this color conversion here and this color conversion will change your bgr to rgb so now it is properly shown in what in the rgb channel and that is going to be uh what we had a normal color okay that you can see over here so if you ever use the uh i am show using the matplotlib make sure you apply this color conversion from bgr to rgb before showing it if you don't want to see those kind of um inaccurate uh representations of the color the next topic that I want to talk about is wavelets, and um, wavelets are not related, as I said, to the in-painting at all, and these are like the cosine transforms or Fourier transform. These are another way to deconstruct a signal, and the good thing about them is there is more than one type of function to use. So in Fourier, you have sine and cosine and so on. But in wavelets, there are too many different types of wavelets to use. So uh, if you want to apply wavelet and wavelet transform, the way to go about it is not using OpenCV. You have to use this module called Pi Wavelets. You have to import it, and it comes with its own data. So here, for example, I use the cameraman image, which is a famous image in image processing. And I'm going to read it from the data of this uh, pi wavelet. And then I apply my uh, discrete wavelet transform 2D, DWT, from PYWT module. So you need to pass to it the image in color, right? Or in this case, actually, it's black and white or grayscale. And then you need to pass to it a wavelet. So here, the wavelet that I'm passing it is by or 1.3. By or means by orthogonal. And there are so many different versions of this by orthogonal. If you want to know about this one and other by orthogonal wavelets, you can go to this website and it shows you exactly how it looks like. So here, let's go ahead and I uh, show you this uh, wavelet, how it looks like. 
So um, this is the uh, decomposition scaling function, and this is the decomposition wavelet function. Okay, I am going to have, as I said, a separate video on the theory of wavelets soon. And I'm going to explain everything about them, but just if you want to know how to do it in Python. So this is what you're using right now. And it is going to return these four different uh, uh, images for you. The one is low, low, which is basically uh, all low uh, pass data, right? Or apply the low pass filter to the data in both directions, horizontal and vertical. So all of the details in the image are kind of filtered out high frequencies so you're only down to low frequencies so this guy is like the blurred version of the image which here we call approximation and then you have these uh, basically detail levels so this guy is LH which is low pass applied in one direction and high pass applied in the other direction this is the opposite of that and this is high high in both directions so here this guy is your horizontal details this guy is your vertical details and this is that is high frequency in both directions that is your diagonal detail okay so you get them uh, from this discrete wavelet transform as coefficients and you can break it down into these four images and here you are going to show these four images in four axes of one figure okay so you're going to use four subplots and then you're going to show each one of them in a separate what? In a separate uh, subplot. And as well as the image itself. Right? And, uh, well, actually, there is no image itself. It's just the, um, these four. The, the image itself is not going to be shown. But you can see it from this low low, right? Because this low low is the image, but blurred. And here we're going to use a gray uh, color map for interpolation. We're going to use the nearest. And the other thing we have here is the enumerate, which is for uh, getting you iterables. So when you say uh, for A, for I and A in the enumerate of this uh, tuple here, what you have is uh, I is going to be like the index. So for this guy is going to be zero, for this one is going to be one, two, and three, and A is going to be that entity itself. So A is going to be L, 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 H, H, L, and H, H. And then you use that I to uh, basically provide the number of the subplot and you use A for the I am show. So let me show you that here. There we go. So this is the uh, cameraman. Now, of course, this is not, <laughs> I thought that's the famous cameraman. It's not the famous cameraman image, but this is anyways a cameraman. And this is kind of the blurred version of the image. These are the horizontal edges, mostly dominant. These are the vertical edges are kind of standing out. And here uh, the diagonal details are standing out, right? So these are the four levels of wavelets. And wavelets have lots of different applications in signal processing, image processing. One of them that I use myself, I remember in a uh, publication, was for uh, watermarking and hiding data, where you hide them in the HL, LH, and the HH, OK? So if you want, you can refer to uh, that paper on Google Scholar and see that. But uh, you never hide details, information in the LL uh, area because it is going to, when you apply the inverse uh, wavelet, you are going to see all of those hidden information very, very visibly. If you add them to the very uh, high detail channel, high, high, then they are, they are very hard to detect. But if you uh, distort the image a little bit, those information will be corrupted easily. So the best place to hide information are these two channels, uh, LH and HL. It gives you a little bit robustness to the distortions in the image as well. It's not going to be super visible, okay? And uh, so that, that's where probably you want to hide your information. Uh, so hopefully this video was useful to you. As I said, I covered two different topics. 
but uh, I think uh, it's worth it to cover both of them for uh, your knowledge. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll see you in the next lecture.